Yo, what up everyone? Welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Here we go. Here we freaking go. It's about time for Darian to tell us the reasons why he couldn't have done it. Spoiler alert! Probably all lies. Here we go. Proof of innocence. Mm-hmm. I already don't believe it. Come on! Why would I even want to kill that manager, man? You want a reason? Easy. I got no motive, man. Yo, this was a diva's first trip to the country, right? How could I possibly know her manager? If I didn't know him, why would I want to kill him? I mean, my first thought immediately was the Interpol thing. He's a detective. It's very possible that he could know him. A simple reason indeed. That was like the worst thing- That was like the worst statement ever! That statement was so stupid. It was like a complete waste of time. Prosecutor Gavin, is it the case that Mr. Latouse had not been to our country before? According to our records, yes. Not even once. I see. Very well. Mr. Justice, you may begin the cross-examination. Great. Now I need to find a motive. I think I know what it might be, though. I have a feeling, and I'm gonna try it, and we're gonna see. I just don't know where I have to present it is the thing. So we're gonna do what we always do. Press it all. Why would I even want to kill the manager? Because you asshole. It obvious. Her manager, sure, but Mr. Latus was. Oh right, sorry, an Interpol agent, wasn't he? Yeah, I just have trouble picturing that big lunk as an undercover cop, you dig? And not a very good one, seeing as how he got wasted. That's so rude. He's laughing at a dude that got killed. I'm not for that at all. <laughs> That's cold, dog. Apollo, please. Please. <coughs> oh, God. I'm already coughing at this. This is gonna be good. Not that it matters either way. See, I had no reason to kill the man, whatever he was. You sure about that? You want a reason? Easy. I got no motive, man. Okay. But that's the same for Machi. No motive was proven for him. Come on, he traveled around the world with that old fart. He had plenty of time to come up with a motive of his own. Ugh. More than I sure did. I mean, think about it. Think about what? The fuck you talking about, boy? That was a diva's first trip to the country, right? Okay. Darian, you're a detective with International Affairs? Yeah, what of it? Even if this was Mr. Latusa's first trip to the country, you still could have met him prior to the concert. Huh? That is true. Or don't you take any international trips in International Affairs? Got him! Drag that boy, Phoenix. Phoenix? I am so used to saying get him, Phoenix, that I actually just said it. Wow. That's about where I am right now. Apollo, I'm sorry. You get him, boy. That's right. Well, Detective Crescent? <laughs> That's your game, is it? Guess I'd better confess, then. Confess? Yeah. It's a bit of an embarrassment, but I've never been sent overseas. What? You're an international affairs detective and you've never gone overseas? What? But you're an international... Yeah, see, me and Plane's got a difference of opinion. We don't like each other much. Oh god, same though. That doesn't stop me from going to conventions though. I just lose my shit every time I go. <laughs> True fact. My condolences are forehead, but he is telling the truth. He's never set foot outside of the country. I can guarantee that. Yo, as it turns out, my division has plenty of work to do locally as well. That's so unfair. That is pretty stupid. Who would have thought? How could I possibly know her manager? If I didn't know him- oh wait, I, sorry, I didn't know where we were. I was like, wait a minute, isn't that the first statement? We couldn't have gone by already. So you didn't fraternize with him at all during the concert? Fraternize? <laughs> I don't think we exchanged a single word. As if anyone would want to talk to that old eastern blockhead. Wow, rude. I see what they did there. Racist. Now the ladies, that's a different matter altogether. So you see... If I didn't know him, why would I want to kill him? Tell me everything, because I'm not buying this. You know what I'm thinking it is? I'm, I'm thinking... <sighs> the only thing we have left that we haven't used for this... Is the, is the whole, like, is Machi a smuggler type deal? Because we really didn't have any of that answered. That's the thing. You sure about that? What? What? Wipe that look off your face before I do it for you. Is that a euphemism? I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll grant you one before you go to jail, boy. I mean, you're going to be in there for a long time. 
Listen, you try throwing out one of your wild accusations. I'll throw it back at you so hard you'll forget who you're accusing of what. Air forehead, perhaps it's best if you let your evidence do the talking, yeah? Ah, <laughs> man, what evidence? That's what I want to know. Hang on, I'm about to get this. So he's using this mode of question as ammunition, huh? Well, I've got ammunition too. Evidence. All right, where do I give it though? Why would I want to even kill that manager? You want a reason? Easy. This is the part where he says he actually has no motive. So is this where we want to present it? Computer is being all fucking McGee. I don't know why it's all fucking McGee today. We haven't used this. This is my only thought here. Because, like, I'm just, I'm not sure. Hmm. I hope so. <gasps> oh. Your Honor. Look at this uh, thing. <laughs> what is that? It looks like candy. Do not eat this. Uh, it, it's not. Don't lick it, please. Oh, pfft. Time for this to be screenshotted all over Twitter. Oh, no. Detective Crescent, ever seen this? Looks like a piece of candy. What the- Is everyone crazy? What candy even looks like this? What it is, is evidence. Don't lick it before you try it. <laughs> what? Alright. <laughs> this is all going in the book. All of it. I didn't make the game, guys. It's right there in front of you. He's not having it. Well, okay, maybe he wanted to lick it and now he's disappointed. Look, it's not my- my- I'm not- I'm not at fault here. Uh, you're going to jail. I was offering you something. Specifically, this is a replica of a cocoon. It was found among the victim's belongings. A cocoon? Never seen one that color. It is a variety only found in the Republic of Borginia. Nowhere else. That is true. Alright, but what is this cocoon replica doing in my courtroom? That is a good question, by the way. <laughs> a very good one! Surely this has nothing to do with a motive for killing Mr. Latouse, does it? Well, that's what we're here to find out, I think. It does! Wait, I, I mean, I think it does. You don't sound so confident, man. A cocoon? Is it one of those silky cocoons? <laughs> Trucy asked the same thing. The kind that you can make, uh, well, silk out of? Not this one. This cocoon makes a powerful curative. A curative? For what? Apparently, it is most efficacious at treating a disease thought incurable. It is the only medicine of its kind. However, it is illegal to take one of these healing cocoons out of Borginia. Whatever for? If it's such a miracle cure, why not share it with the world? See, that's what a nice person would think. Judge, you're a nice person. Yeah, that's what I've been wondering. We looked into the matter at some length. Apparently, it isn't difficult at all to manufacture the remedy from the cocoon. Yet, if you change the process only slightly, you can easily make a large quantity of something else entirely. Like what? A deadly poison, in fact. Oh. Okay, well that makes a little bit of sense then. If people just get their hands on it and don't know what to do with it properly, that could have bad ramifications. So I get it. But at the same time, then they should have trained people that manufacture it over there and then send it out to the world. Why not? What? There was an incident several years ago when some of these got out onto the black market. It caused quite the commotion in the global community. Though the media was kept largely unaware. Hmm, intriguing. All this has led to a strict ban on the cocoon's export. One rigidly enforced by Interpol, among others. Interpol. This is where it's, this is where we're gonna tie it together, is it? Right. The victim, Romain Latouse, was an Interpol agent. Detective Crescent, you insist on referring to him as a manager, but that is misleading. Romain Latouse wasn't killed as a manager. He was killed as an undercover agent. Oh shit. There goes the planet. <laughs> is it about to come to it? Man, I freaking hope so. Holy crap. Oh, what you gonna say now, Shark Boy? Are you angry? Oh, I'm so sorry. So I was trying to smuggle this gumball into the country? That's what you're trying to say? I'm saying that could well be a motive for murder. Oh, so I was gonna sell it on the black market and make myself a pretty penny? Ridiculous! I mean, totally unthinkable! Why? Why is it, though? Unthinkable, you say? Why? Why are me and Apollo the same person now? Just like me and Phoenix were the same person before. 
Perhaps it's time for another testimony. Well, about what? What? How many? How many testimonies we want to hear from him? They're all fucking just windbag shit. Like, come on, man. About the smuggling of cocoons business. I wonder what he actually knows about it. Cocoon smuggling. Tell me what you know. Because to be honest, we don't know too, too much about it either. International Affairs got a memo about these cocoons. Then how come you asked me if it was a piece of candy? This boy lying. Interpol's all hot and bothered about him. Can't sell him on the black market, too dangerous. Yeah, cocoon smuggling ain't exactly lucrative anymore. Man, I'm in International Affairs, I know the deal. You didn't even know what the fuck it was when I showed it to you, boy. So either that was a lie or this is a lie. Why is it all lies, though? Indeed. Interpol wanted these cocoons bad enough to send Mr. Latouse undercover. Yeah, they sure did, though. But still, ugh, I guess there's still something I don't understand. You kids think of the craziest things. But no way am I going to risk life and limb. Just to get my hands on some dirty cocoon money. That sounds weird. <laughs> it just sounds, sounds strange. Not the most noble of statements, but duly noted. According to reports, these cocoons top these cocoons top Interpol's list. Selling them to an underground organization would be risky. Hmm. Very well. You may begin the cross examination. Of what? The, barely anything there even mattered, did it? This is the only motive I've got. He was up to something, and I'm going to find out what. All right, let's do this. This is so strange that this, like, the way these questionings have gone, like, it's just a bit weird. I don't, I can't put my finger on why. International Affairs got a memo about these cocoons. Can I just press everything? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Let's just, let's just do our normal thing and see if something falls into place here. That memo, that's how you knew about the cocoons. Oh, nice one, nice one. I'm running scared now. You had to know about the cocoons to plan this. Just how well known are these cocoons? Uh, I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I'd never heard of them. Well, Lamiwa knew about them, though not their use. My reports indicate that there are ongoing efforts to control information about them. Most people only know they're illegal to export, and that's all. Then I've nothing to be embarrassed about after all. <laughs> there is a first for everything, isn't there? <laughs> da, 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 da. Don't worry, you've got a lot of other things to be embarrassed about. You could say people like me who know about them are minority, yeah. Okay. But that includes everyone in international affairs, man. And everyone in Interpol, too, for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> what? Dude, it, is it just me? It's like so bunk. Like, I don't even understand. What the fuck? Okay, fine. Interpol's all hot and bothered about them. Tell me about the hot and bothered part, please. So, there are other Interpol agents like Mr. Latouse? All over the world, likely. Deep undercover, most of them. That's why these cocoons are too hot for the black market. You don't want Interpol sniffing through your wares. No, probably not. Most came to the conclusion that... Can't sell them on the black market too dangerous. Can't sell them on the black market too dangerous. Tell me more about that, please. Dangerous? Yeah, Interpol finds you, they arrest you on the spot. Or another marketeer might think you're part of a sting and take you out himself. Times have changed. How does he know about all this? How does he know about all this? He knows a lot. Yeah, cocoon smuggling ain't exactly lucrative anymore. Alright. Let's hear about this. But wouldn't scarcity drive up prices? Yeah, and attention. Every gangster and his brother would want a piece of that action. Yo, they'd turn your forehead into Swiss cheese before you could say objection. Maybe we could get them to cut his hair, too. What the fuck are you talking about? Your hair's longer than mine, boy. Who's on trial here again? I don't even know. Both these dudes got big ass long hair and they tell me about my hair? Man, you so obviously know nothing about the market. He's... I feel like he's shooting himself in the foot here, but what do we have that could actually get him on this? He knows a lot. Why? What do we have? Don't we have something that talked about this? Or don't we? Replica of a coon forum, which remedy for incurious may be excreted. Article about the case doesn't mention the lyrics of Lamiwa's ballad. What did this have in it again? Oh, his picture is there. 
right. Okay. Then we have this newspaper article, too. Article about the Chief Justice's son who's inflicted with incuritis. Now, this has got to come into play at some point, and I'm assuming it's coming soon because we haven't used it yet. This is the first case in the country, and it was in the newspaper, so people know about it. Wait a minute. Alright, hang on. Let me go through with this line of questioning and see what, where we go. And that's a bad thing? Yo, don't even try to mess with me about this stuff. Man, I'm in international affairs! I know the deal! Oh, the fuck? This dude! Stringing me on. Which is why you'd know how to find a loophole in the system. Hey, you can say what you want about me, but back off of international affairs. There ain't no loopholes, okay? What do you think we are, Boy Scouts? That wasn't what I was trying to... Uh, down there, and it's as you say. There are no loopholes, at least in the case of these cocoons. International Affairs, Interpol, and Borgenian Customs are all watching. Yo, see? We know what we're doing. Not like some yippin' little doggies that lap up every word that diva says. Wow, he's real salty about her. Holy shit, dude. Why, I oughta... Oughta what? You want some of this? No. Oh, uh, I did. Until I found out you were a dick. Now nothing's saving your ass. I'm going back to him. Haha, <laughs> chill, both of you. Let's do this cool, yeah? Screw cool. I want this guy's head on a stick. Me too. The replica has got to be the key to his motive. There's got to be a way to find out what he was up to. Alright, but where? International Affairs got a memo about the cocoons, okay? Interpol's all hot and bothered about them. Can't sell them on the black market. Too dangerous. Can't sell them on the black market, too dangerous. Cocoon smuggling ain't exactly lucrative anymore. Is this where I have to present it? Because it, he's saying that it's not lucrative, but we could show him the newspaper article that says that someone's actually dying from the thing, so wouldn't it be kind of a lucrative? I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. I This has to be the key to something. Objection! Oh! Why not choose a less dangerous buyer, then? I would. It, did I really do it? Yo, how clueless are you? Everyone in the market's dangerous. The second they found out I was a cop, I could kiss my keister goodbye. Why sell to a black market buy? Oh, yes. So this is what he's going at. The, the chief of police needed it himself. How about someone like this? That's pretty lucrative, isn't it? That article. That's about the chief justice's... Sorry, not the chief of police. The chief justice is what I meant. You get what I mean. A deadly poison can be extracted from the cocoon, but so can a cure. And not a cure for just any disease. A cure for incuritis. Incuritis? Uh, I've heard of that somewhere- You were just there at the hospital visiting him. Come on, man. You went to visit a victim of the disease this morning. Ah! Uh, why, that's the disease the Chief Justice's son has. You aren't saying. Our witness is a detective. He would have contact with the Chief Justice. You are saying the Chief Justice would never deal in contraband. Are you sure? Not even to save his own son, though? <laughs> Why am I Apollo, though? Not even to save his own son's life? He might. But even if the deal went through, why, it'd be an international scandal. That's Detective Crescent's insurance. If word ever got out, the one with his neck on the line would be the Chief Justice. He's right. So Darren could walk away scot-free. He'd never say that he- that he did it. Detective Crescent, is this true? Yo, first I'm a murderer, now I'm a smuggler? How many crimes are you trying to pin on me anyway? All of them. Just tasteful as it is to think about, if the Chief Justice were the buyer, why, a seller couldn't hope for a better deal. A very cowardly seller. Yo, don't let sleeves over there trick you. So I made a deal with the Chief Justice? Where's your proof? Well... Oh yeah, and you're forgetting one other important thing. Do tell. Interpol isn't the only ones out there watching this. Borgenian Customs barely sleeps, they're so worried about cocoons getting out. Hmm, so we were informed. Okay. Let's continue with the cross-examination. Okay. Borgenian Customs is very thorough. Everything and everyone gets checked. 
Raccoon possession will get you arrested on the spot. Oh wait, these are new these are new statements, aren't they? Okay, so let's press these to see. Everything and everyone gets checked. Okay, tell me more about that. Just how strict is this customs check? Yo, way strict. They keep planes on the ground for hours. I do recall it being a bit extreme. They were even confiscating gumdrops and marshmallows. Yes, it would be hard to distinguish them. That's right. Gavin was in Borginia, wasn't he? I remember setting off the metal detector several times. I had to practically strip naked to walk through. Oh, what a... What a shame I missed that. Here's a travel tip for you. Leave the bling at home, you glimmerous fop. <laughs> Cocoon possession will get you arrested on the spot and then sentenced to death. Okay. That's pretty extreme. Virginia has this rep as an idyllic laid-back place. Truth is, they're beyond hardcore with security. The Republic of Borgenia is a peaceful, pleasant country. So, this level of security shows us how truly concerned they are about the cocoons. That's the situation. Okay, hey man, if there's a way to get cocoons out of there, I'd sure like to know. If there's a way... I think I know what it was. Oh no, I think I actually do. I'm just not sure where to present it is all. Where is it? Lamiwa gave this to him in Borginia. And they did say they were checking like bags of candy and suitcases and everything, but what if this is how it got through? Because we don't really have anything else, do we? Is this what it is? Burned the night of the concert. That would be the other reason why they'd want to destroy it as well, wouldn't it? Now I'm worried about how it got... Now I'm worried about how this is getting... Okay. My original thought, if this was used, who put the cocoons in it? Or the, co the one cocoon? Was it Machi? Does he actually have a small hand in it? I don't know. Oh, shit. Let's see what happens. Actually, there is one way. What? One way to get something out of the country, no checks. What is it? You become a prosecutor. That's right. They probably didn't check Gavin at all. A prosecutor? Although he did say that they stripped him naked almost once, so I don't know about that. Ah! I don't believe it. Believe it, Prosecutor Gavin. What was it that you told me yesterday at your office? Here I come. It was a beautiful instrument. It was played lovingly for many years. A guitar befitting a woman like Lamiwa. How did it end up here? I mentioned how much I enjoyed playing it that night, and she made a present of it. So, this guitar is from Borginia? That it is. We couldn't carry it on the plane. Changes in air pressure and humidity ruined the wood. So we vacuum packed it in Lamiwa's studio. I used a special shipping service available for transporting evidence. He didn't have it on his person, remember? Oh my god. They brought it right up to my office for me. Pristine and untouched. Oh no. Did I get that right, Prosecutor Gavin? Untouched? Quite. The guitar was wrapped in several sheets and vacuum packed in Borginia. The pack was untouched until the day of the concert. Are you saying that Qatar was... You were set up. With cocoons this small, it would have been very easy to use your guitar as a mule to smuggle a cocoon out of Borginia. Dun, 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 dun. Vanna, I would like to buy a vowel, please. What? Which reminds me, Prosecutor Gavin, that guitar had some work done on it recently, right? Work? Good memory, Air Forehead. It's hard not to remember. Well, you know how guitars have a round hole in the front? It is called the sound hole. Well, they found something attached to the wood just inside there. A broken device of some sort. Yep. A broken device? Yes, this in fact. The igniter, one of them. An igniter? Exactly. Consider this, if you will. What if that igniter wasn't the only thing that was attached inside your guitar? You... you mean... He means this, of course. Oh, oh! There was a way to get a cocoon out of the country. 
They could use picky prosecutor Gavin's privileged guitar as a mule. Oh, you, you sweating now, boy, Darian? Come on. And who better to do that than someone with access? Like a member of the band. York! Oh no, his hair! <laughs> Damn, boy, that mullet, though. Order, order! So the igniter... ...was placed in there for a clear reason, it seems. It was a safety precaution. A precaution? Ah, her forehead. At last, it all comes together. Every strange thing that happened that day... Care to review? Maestro, the gentle sounds of Lamiwa's ballad, if you please. Yeah, let's rock out. First, my keys were stolen, a harmless misdemeanor. Which forced me to break the lock on my guitar case. The key was stolen to retrieve the cocoon from the guitar. Oh, I, I see. But, things didn't go so well. The smuggler wasn't counting on the guitar being wrapped. Only a member of the band could get near that case. Unwrapping the guitar would raise too many suspicions. Then the concert began. Right about this time. A very large problem presented itself to the smuggler. What's that? Mr. Latouse. Ah. Oh. Mr. Latouse, an undercover agent, was onto something. He would have known about the guitar. He'd only have to check the shipping record. So, Mr. Latouse tried to examine the guitar himself. If the cocoon were confiscated then, the gig would be up. The only thing left for the smuggler to do was get rid of the whole lot. Torching it. It's over! Press the switch, now! And then the guitar went up in flames. <laughs> Aww. That's the last time we're probably gonna see that. And then... Mr. Latouse died. With Lamewa there to witness it. There's your case. What do you think? <laughs> Brilliant, man! Detective Crescent? Yo, I gotta know, you make all that up on the fly? For a made-up story, it makes a great deal of sense, Darian. Ugh, the Republic of Borginia. Sorry, man, but I haven't even been there. True, you haven't. Ha! Let's see you make up a story for that, kid! How'd I hide the cocoon in the first place, huh? It's not so hard to imagine. You had help. A Borginian accomplice. Oh no. That's all. Here it comes. It's, it's as I feared, isn't it? That you had an accomplice was clear from the start. The voice Lamiwa heard proves it. It's over. Press the switch now. You made this transmission from backstage. While your co-conspirator was on stage. What? But who was it? We know who it was, don't we? This is it, the coup de grace. And for once, I know what I'm doing. There's only one person who could have helped him. I got this, I got this. Oh my god, though. Let's hear what Mr. Justice has to say, then. But be warned. With a great accusation comes great responsibility. Make up your answer. On the fly, as it were, you'll be harsh- Oh, that's a lot of help, okay. Are you ready, Mr. Justice? Who was the smuggler's accomplice? It has to be Machi. It has to be. He wouldn't even tell Lamiwa about the cocoon in the first place, so she doesn't know. Oh boy. There's only one person who meets the requirements of the accomplice, and that person is the defendant, Machi Tobaye. But, but Mr. Justice, he's your client. Yo, a defense attorney accusing his client, that's a new one. I assure you, no one is more unhappy about this than I. But, I am here to defend him in the murder of Mr. Latouse. And I stand by my statement earlier that he is innocent of that particular crime. Indeed. The defendant is Borginian. He does meet the basic requirements to be the accomplice. But what if it was, in fact, Lamiwa? It couldn't have been. Well, you seem sure of yourself. The reason is electronic signals, Your Honor. Electronic... signals? Recall that this remote only works to a range of 30 feet. Beyond that, it's useless. Hmm, yes, that's true. Now, think back to the testimony. When the shooter made his transmission, Lamiwa was in the air vent. Right above the dressing room where the shooter stood. Let's look at the stage diagram. This is the area that the remote could reach from the air vent. Yep. Well, looking at this, it seems that Lamiwa still could have done the deed. 
No. When the shooter made that transmission, the stage was slightly different than shown here. It was in the middle of the guitar serenade, so she was all way up high on that pillar, right? Yeah, see, it lifts up. Part of the stage was raised. Prosecutor Gavin and Lamiwa standing were there. They were on a tower which happens to be 15 feet tall. In other words, the remote couldn't have worked from Lamiwa's position in the air vent. Oh. Yup. Well, Detective Chris Send, what do you say to that? This is so good! Your Honor. Yes, Detective? Yo, could we see the video where Gavin's guitar burns? I agree, I want to see that again. Just one more time. Uh, uh, well, I don't see why not. What? Don't tell me he has a way out of this. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna... I'm, I am, personally... I'm not gonna say no to watching it again. <laughs> Here I come! And boom! There it is. It's lit. <laughs> it's lit, boy! Okay. <laughs> Too bad, so sad, punk. Punk? First you were sleeves and then kid and now punk? You're losing rank fast, Apollo. What exactly were we supposed to see in this video? The problem isn't in what we see, correct, Darian? Right, it's what you hear. We are musicians after all. Care to explain for us non-musicians? Yo, sure thing, punk. Let me get your yarn straight first. You're saying I ordered the Wii Pianist to set off that igniter? That right? Yes. Well, in order to do that, he'd have to press a switch. Am I right? Okay. Well, take another listen. Pay attention to the piano. Piano. I'm looking for the piano right now and I don't even see anybody there. Is it... Was it pre-recorded? Couldn't have been, right? I mean, it is still playing. I get that part. What seems to be the problem there? The piano sounded just fine. Yo, and that's the problem, man. You still don't get it? It takes two seconds to hit a switch, though. You could easily put your hands back on the keys. Yeah, how's he supposed to hit that switch if he's playing? You've got Miss Diva, the guitar, the bass, the piano, and the drums. The only one with her hands free was the diva. Lamiwa. But according to you, she couldn't have been the accomplice, could she? Ugh. Your accomplice would have had a hard time helping out if they couldn't even press the switch. No, I don't think so. I'm not gonna let this get me. Wait a minute now. No, that can't be everything. Okay, we're gonna see this a lot. I can't tell if- is Machi over there? I can't even see him. He might be in the shadows or something. But because he's in the shadows, that means he actually could have done it. The piano plays non-stop. But we can't really see him very well. At least not at that part, anyway. Like, that's the part where he's actually shadowed up. He couldn't have pressed the switch. Well, Mr. Justice, the piano does seem to be playing when the guitar catches fire. Well... Yo, it's okay. We all make mistakes sometimes. Paolo? Were you wrong? I can't be wrong. Everything makes perfect sense. How could it all... just... Strange. What's strange? No, it's just... Something's odd about the performance there. Odd? Mr. Justice, if Machitobaye didn't press the switch, then he could not be the accomplice you claim he is. But everything points to it. Every fact says he's the accomplice. Yo, you got the facts wrong, man. Do I? Here's some facts for you. Gavin's guitar is on fire. But the pianist didn't press the switch. In other words, your story's full of holes. Mr. Justice, let's hear your final opinion on the matter now. Was the defendant Machitubaye the accomplice? Your answer will reflect on everything you said here. Give it some thought. Apollo, if Machi's not the accomplice, then our whole case is ruined. I know. It has to be him. He was the only one who could have helped the smuggler. He had to have pressed the switch. Well, you better find a way to prove it. Ugh. What do I do? What do I do? I need a cake. 
quick. <laughs> Cheap. Sorry, I was playing Parappa the other day. Ah, uh, there has to be something that doesn't fit. Something odd. Something odd. Something odd. Is it gonna be this thing again? Where's the piano? It's four. Okay. I don't know if this is going to tell us anything. Hmm. Does it sound pre-recorded? Like, I don't know if I can tell. I'm seeing- I'm trying to listen to see if it loops. Sorry, we have to listen to all this. I think there is something here. I think I know what it is. Okay, I'm gonna go with this only because even if I don't have the exact moment pinpointed, it does sound a little bit weird. It doesn't sound like flowy. It, the part of the middle part flows through each part, each segment, but then it kind of stops abruptly and maybe that's all I've got? But I've got nothing else, so I really don't know. Wait a second. What? You thought of something? What was Gavin saying just now? Strange. What's strange? No, it's just... Something's odd about the performance there. Yeah, see, he heard it too. The only thing is, is we've got to be able to pinpoint it. It's not much to go on, but it's all I've got. What exactly did he hear that was odd? Have you come up with something, Mr. Justice? May I remind you that everything rests on this. Can you prove Machi Tobaye pressed the switch? Let's hear your final answer. Can you prove that you pressed the switch? I can prove it, because if you can't, I'm assuming that's game over at this point. I don't know if you can call this proof, per se, but I can prove it was possible. Then, as prosecutor, it falls to me to ask you to show us evidence supporting this. Air forehead. You're sure about this? Ha! <laughs> Accepted! There's no evidence, man! I think there is. Let's see your evidence, Mr. Justice. On what do you base your claim that the defendant pressed the switch? On what do you base your claim? It's gotta be this. Okay. C breathe. I've got this. The basis for my claim is music, your honor. Music? What about music? Let's listen to the piano part around the time when the switch was to be pressed. Right before the guitar burst into flames. Okay. Got it. Hmm, I hear a piano being played. But, doesn't it sound kind of simple? Simple? Ah, uh, I think I know what he's suggesting. You think Machi could have played that part with one hand? Ah, of course! It does sound odd th th rather than the rest of them. The first part opens up beautifully, and then th when we got to the third part, that was also definitely different chords together. He only needed one hand to press that switch. He could play the piano with the other. Ha! <laughs> what, so you're some kind of piano savant? Um, actually, no. Then what do you know? You can't play a part like that with one hand. Ugh. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about here. Wait, I know. Oh, sorry, I thought that was Trucy because it showed her. God damn it. Wait, I know Trucy. Yeah? You got something? 
Mr. Wright, your father, he's a pianist, could he? Oh, Daddy? He couldn't play a part like that even if he had three hands. Oh, damn it. Yo, so sorry, so sad for you. No, I've got to be onto something here. No, not really. Huh? That was just the easy way to prove it. There's always the hard way. Something Apollo knows a lot about. Do you get what I'm saying? Man, how are you going to prove whether he played it with one hand or two? You can't. I admit it will be rather difficult to prove, but it's highly likely he was playing with one hand. How do you know that? The clue is what Prosecutor Gavin described as sounding odd. What sounded odd? I'll bet we can tell by listening to a certain part of the song. No. No way. You sweat now, boy, are ya? Yeah, why the heck you lie and- I'm about to get you, though. I'm so excited for this. Well, it seems we've come to the moment of truth at last. Let's hear what Mr. Justice has to say for himself. Show us the part that proves the defendant was playing with one hand. Probably all we have to do is listen to just one of the different segments to see the difference, right? Or to hear the difference, I should say. Right before the guitar burst into flame. Machi was definitely playing one-handed just before the guitar caught fire. And one section of the song proves it. Okay, I think it's the first, but it could be the third because that also sounded good. Proof he played one-handed. Um, let's listen to this first part. That's definitely two-handed. Let's try it. He did the da na na that's one hand, that's the right hand, and then the broom, that chord, that's the left hand. Prosecutor Gavin, I'm sure you've realized by now just what it was that sounded odd to you. As I'm sure you've realized it yourself, Erforhead. Realized what? I'll demonstrate. Let's listen to the part in question again, shall we? Pay particular attention to the but a fleeting melody phrase. Alright, let's do it. Yep. See, he doesn't have a back chord on that. There's no left chord. No left hand. Man, 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 how many times do we have to listen to the same thing? You're right. Enough of that. Uh-oh, you, you, you in trouble now, boy? Let's listen to another section, shall we? Another section? The guitar bursts into flame at the end of the second verse. Let's listen to the same spot in the first verse. Pay attention to Oh, That Night in Your Embrace. You'll hear probably both hand chords here. Yep. You hear that? That's two hands playing right there for sure. Yep, sounds way different. Oh, play verse two again. Oh, Jesus. You guys weren't kidding about this. Yep, see, he didn't have that high on the end. Yep, nothing. It's different. They feel the same, true. But they're clearly very different. What? Well put, your honor. The phrase in verse two is quite simple. But the same phrase in verse one has a high and low notes. You'd have to use two hands to play that for sure. Oh. What's that prove? I would think you'd know that by now. This is why I hate dealing with amateurs, man. So the two verses had different arrangements. Happens all the time. Not this time, Darian. Yeah, is he gonna come to my rescue? I hope so. He knows this is bullshit, too. There's no point in changing an arrangement if you can't hear it clearly. And that wasn't the point. I had him play specifically so the piano would stay in the background. Oh, oh! That was what I noticed. Why should the same phrase sound slightly different? I asked myself. Now ask yourselves why Machi changed how he played, and there's only one answer. He needed a free hand in order to press the switch. No! I don't know what sound that is, actually. <laughs> Damn, boy, you got a butt on you, though. What a shame that you're going to jail. Order, order! I believe this ties in the facts together. Well, Prosecutor Gavin? Yes, quite. So, personally, this comes as a terrible disappointment. <laughs> What? No comeback? I can't believe it. I finally did it. I shut him up. Very well. Barring an objection from the prosecution. 
I will now state the court's opinion on this matter. <laughs> He's gone crazy! Good show, Sleeves. No, great show. What? It's not over? I don't like it when he looks so... so happy. You tell him, Gavin. Tell him what's so disappointing. Personally, I'm terribly disappointed in you, at her forehead. What did, what did I do? What you mean? Huh? Me? Yes, don't get me wrong, your case is solid. It's the facts I'll check out, but even now, you have yet to show us a single piece of decisive evidence. Yeah, but the facts, anyone can see it was him. Unfortunately, anyone does not include the law. I'm afraid your case doesn't cut it. What do we need to do? But what do we even have left? <sighs> Machi won't say anything, though. If we could just get him to admit. A thousand facts might point towards the same conclusion, but without decisive evidence, it's not proof. That's the rule under our current legal system. I don't believe it. It does not seem as though the defense has any more evidence to present. Oh, I think if he did, we'd already have seen it a long ways back. It is unfortunate. But at present, this court is unable to acknowledge your accusation. What? What? Did I do something wrong? No, I couldn't have. Really, I wasn't on the right track? The truth is staring us right in the face. Why can't they see it? What's the point of a legal system that protects criminals? Apollo, remember what Daddy said. It won't be easy proving he did it. Especially not under the current court system. So what do I do? Like I said, good luck. And be aware that it will be impossible to prove his guilt by conventional methods. Oh, this is, must be what he means. But what do we do, though, with that? Every man has an igniter inside him. Find Darian Crescent's igniter. Set it off. I wonder what he meant by every man's igniter. I think he just meant a weak spot, no? The kind of thing that a single spark could turn to a wildfire of emotion. I won't be able to press him further by conventional means. I've got to find a weak spot in this guy. Something fatal. Fatal? Yo, so can I get back to work now or what? It may look like I got a lot of time on my hands, but I got no more time to play pretend with this deadweight attorney. God, I'm- Gah! It's gonna be so satisfying when I get this ass. Well, Mr. Justice, we've come this far without decisive evidence. This witness won't be coming back to the stand once we let him go. Every man has an igniter. Huh? Didn't you say the better the guitar, the brighter it burns, Prosecutor Gavin? Ah, yes, good guitars are kept dry, is why. That provides the best sound. Even a small spark could cause irreparable damage. Your plan has an igniter in it too. Detective Apollo's got this! It was there from the very beginning. It's gotta have something to do with the kid. What? Fight in time justice if you blow this one. He'll be out of your hands for good. Go for it, Apollo! Yo, what? And this igniter's supposed to come burn me up? That's almost poetic there, Mr. Attorney. All the better. I'm rather fond of poetry. And I intend to hear this one through to the very end. Oh, Gavin's waiting for it too. He knows. He's ready to seal this deal. Our forehead. You are accusing this man, Darian Crescent, of two crimes. It's the murder of Mr. Latouse and the smuggling of Borginian Cocoon. This is your last chance to prove your case. This trial has already run on far too long. Mr. Justice, this will be my last warning. The moment this igniter of yours turns out to be a dud is the moment this cross-examination ends. Uh-oh. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. This is it. This is do or die time, guys. Then let's have it. Show us the basis for these accusations against Darian Crescent. Okay. This is really my last chance. The key that will take apart Darian Crescent's plan is... Crescent's... It's gotta be what I said! It has... But will Machi speak if I call him? We're out of evidence, and we've already said it. Call a witness. Machi. Will he say, though? He said that he refuses to say anything. I've gotta do it. I've got nothing else. Your igniter isn't a piece of evidence. Huh? So what is... It is true that I couldn't show decisive evidence, but perhaps what I needed to prove my case was something else. You mean a witness. He's gotta do it. He's just got to. Proving his guilt is a tall order, but I've got just the person to do it. Very well, Mr. Justice. 
Who is this person who can prove Darren Kristen's guilt? It's gotta be Machi. Please say something. The one person who can prove Darian Crescent's guilt is the defendant, Machi Tobaye. Your client? Again? Machi Tobaye was an accomplice to the cocoon smuggling plot. Without him, Darian Crescent could not have gotten the cocoon. Furthermore, he can easily prove that he's the one who plotted to smuggle it. The real cri oh, the one who plotted it is the real criminal in the case. Sorry, Medi. How so? It would require just one of the very cocoons Mr. Latouse was looking for. With the cooperation of the Republic of Borginia, we could burn a cocoon. The burnt cocoon would leave a particular residue. A residue we would no doubt also find inside the burnt out guitar. Aha, very scientific of you. Thus, if Machi Tobaye acknowledges his agreement with Darian Crescent concerning the attempted smuggling of a Borginian cocoon, the case is solved. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darian's laughing again. Your unrelenting passion is remarkable. You really want to get me, don't you? Yup. I am so pissed that I thought you were hot. Too bad you'll never be able to. That's not what you said last night. Wait, what? The little key tickler won't acknowledge anything. Especially not anything to do with cocoon smuggling. Probably because you put him up to something. What's this all about? Taking a cocoon out of the country means death. By Borgenian law. Ah, uh, yeah, see? If our pianist really was a smuggler, then testifying about it would be suicide. Believe me, he's not talking. But you're wrong, Detective Crescent. What? It's the other way around. If Machi doesn't admit to smuggling here, he's in deep trouble. Huh? How? Look, if Machi admits to smuggling here, then he'll be tried in our courts by our laws. You don't get the death penalty for smuggling in our country. Ugh! The victim in this case was an undercover Interpol agent. I'm sure that news has already reached Borginia. And they'll likely broadcast our dealings in court today. Including the part about the Borginian cocoon. Yeah, but... But, but, but... Oh, shoot, I see where this is going! Hell yes! But if Machi doesn't admit to smuggling now... He'll eventually be picked up by the Borginian police. And it's not like he's in any danger in our court. We're not going to find him guilty of murder here, not now. Yeah, but you can't do this. You, you can't. You can't accuse me. Maybe the law doesn't allow it. But who's going to think you're really innocent after hearing this trial? The same goes for Machi Tobaye. Ugh! The cocoon smuggling your entire plan? Machi Tobaye knows everything. There's only one way out of it for him. And that's to acknowledge his own crime. The crime of cocoon smuggling. What you gonna do? Don't be doing that thriller thing here. This is serious business now. <laughs> Don't worry there. I'll get... I'll get you out of the country. I'll set you up someplace, a hidden mansion, real nice. You want a house made of cookies or no? A house made of pianos? Come on. He's talking to Machi, is he? He's trying to bribe him. In front of the- in front of the fucking judge! Please don't- Whoa! What the fuck is happening? Holy shit! Fucking Sharknado! Every- <laughs> The judge is my face right now. Oh, he's falling apart, boy. Yeah, play it, Sam. Do it. Darian. I consider that my last session with you. We rocked. I'm guessing we can treat that outburst as a confession. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's laughing again. There's a kind of sick desperation in it now, though. He's fucked up. Oh, he's crazy. Oh my god, did we actually do it without even talking to Machi? I thought for sure he was going to have to come up and say something. Well, have you been listening to today's trial? Yes. And you'll talk? You tell this court everything? Oh, he is going to. I didn't want it to turn out this way, but I'm not the kind of lawyer that can overlook a crime. Today's trial was all for your benefit, you know? I see no reason why you should hesitate now. I knew from the beginning, I knew. Machi, situation I cannot explain, but money I needed. Very much money. Today's trial 
raises a delicate issue with our legal system. The only thing definite in a court of law is evidence. This is the golden rule, however, it does become apparent that not all things can be tried by the standard. Should another case of this sort surface, we may have to consider an alternate system by which to administer justice. Anyway, Mr. Machitobaye? Yes. I promise you will receive a fair trial by the laws of our country. And, with regards to the current changes for the murder of, or charges for the murder of Mr. Latus, this court is prepared to announce a verdict. Oh, look at him! Oh, he's so cute! I thank you. I only lie, but you see truth. You find truth. What a sweet little boy. Poor kid. That's our job. Very well. This court finds a defendant, Machi Tobaye, not guilty! Boy, the pants, though, he's so cute. Yay, we done it! Court is adjourned. And just in time, because my computer decided to update right now. Of course it did. Boy, but this is crazy. Sorry for anything that's happening. Things are happening way too quickly right now. I wonder what'll happen to Machi. Well, he did smuggle a cocoon out of Borginia. I guess there'll be another trial here. Who's this? All's well that ends well. Oh, Phoenix, were you actually there, or did you just pop by? Daddy! I owe you both my thanks. Lamiwa? My, is something wrong? I'm sorry. I-, I... Machi was your partner on stage. Your friend! Oh, he's apologizing because he's in trouble now. Yes, I thought of him as my own son. Even now, I do. Yet. Something got a hold of him. Something evil. I see that. And he must pay for what he has done. Is that not how it should be? Oh, well, she understands, I think. I'm still sorry. Do not be sorry. Oops, sorry. You have given me courage. Courage? I am considering an eye operation. It was my suggestion, actually. You mean, you'll be able to see again? It's funny, I have always been afraid of the light. Light seems so harsh, so unforgiving. According to the doctor, Lamiwa's lost her sight due to some kind of accident. An accident? As you know, I suffer from amnesia. I feared that if I could see, perhaps it would open my eyes to the truth I have been learning from. I was scared. You know what changed her mind? Hearing your defense in there today. Ah. She could feel your gaze unwavering, always looking straight at the truth. If the light returns to my eyes, I think I will take up painting. Painting? That's right! She's the landscape painter in sound, after all. Oh, that's lovely, darling. I hope you do that. I will paint the two of you, I promise. Woohoo! I can't wait, Lamiwa! This was so sweet! I owe you my thanks, too, Apollo. Uh, thanks, Mr. Wright, but for what? You reminded me I need to hurry things along. On my secret mission, that is. What's that about? Are we gonna hear about that later? Right, your secret mission. Apollo Tusi. I hope that so. we will meet again someday soon. You bet. Me too. Yay! And so, like a ballad, the trial flowed on and on until it came to the end. Thanks to the trial, the guitar serenade was a huge hit. Prosecutor Gavin is even more dazzling to look at now. Very sorry for my computer. I, of course it would mess up here. It's because I've been recording so long. The um, capture device is getting overheated. But there's something I want to say to that guy. Next time you write a ballad, have them catch the killer at the end. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh man, thank you so, so much, you guys. This is going to be the last video. Um... Before my wedding and honeymoon, I just want everybody to know that um, I do need to take a break during that time and I hope you understand. I'm not going to start the new case now because if I do, you're only going to get like one episode or two episodes before I absolutely leave the country and it wouldn't be fair to leave you hanging. So I'm going to stop it right here and go on 
um, a break. I probably will have no videos, although I'll try to upload some stream videos in the meanwhile, but that might not happen if I don't have time. I've got family flying in from another country in a few days. So as you guys can understand, I'm going to be super busy. Thank you for letting me live my real life and get the wedding stuff and honeymoon stuff done. I appreciate it. Videos will probably not return probably until Friday, October 12th. We're going to be in Ireland for 10 days. I'm so excited. And then we have the wedding stuff beforehand. I love you guys so, so much. I will put an update on Facebook and Twitter about the um, about the videos and my Twitch streams as well. And if you want to see pictures of the wedding or anything, you can follow me there to see those as well. I'm also on Instagram and Snapchat. I love you guys so, so much. And when I come back to see you, I'll be a married woman. Woohoo! <laughs> I love you. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.